Ever wondered why the same amount of money buys you less over time? It's all about purchasing power. You see, purchasing power is a fascinating concept that allows us to understand the value of our money. Let's break it down. Purchasing power refers to the quantity of goods and services that one unit of a currency can buy. For example, think about how much a dollar could buy you 10 years ago and compare that to what it can get you today. There's a difference, right? That's purchasing power at work. This concept is not only crucial for economists and financial experts, but it also has a significant impact on our daily lives. It affects how we budget, how we save, and even how we spend. So remember, purchasing power isn't just a financial term, it's something that impacts your wallet every day. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this critical economic concept. Inflation, the invisible thief, slowly erodes your purchasing power. But how exactly does it work? Well, imagine inflation as a sneaky pickpocket, subtly lightening your wallet without you even noticing. The more this thief operates, the less you have to spend, even if the number of dollars in your wallet stays the same. Inflation is essentially an increase in the overall price of goods and services in an economy over a certain period. When the cost of goods and services increases, the purchasing power of each dollar decreases. That's because each dollar you hold can now buy a smaller percentage of a good or service. Let's illustrate this with an example. Suppose you have $100 today, and a loaf of bread costs $2. You can buy 50 loaves of bread with your $100, right? But what happens if inflation creeps in, and the price of a loaf of bread rises to $3 next year? Suddenly, your $100 can only buy about 33 loaves of bread. In this scenario, inflation has reduced your purchasing power. Even though you still have the same number of dollars, you can buy fewer loaves of bread. This is the impact of inflation and it's why economists often refer to it as an invisible tax. Over time, inflation can significantly erode purchasing power. If inflation averages 2% per year, for example, the purchasing power of a dollar would be cut in half in about 36 years. It's a slow process, but it's one that has significant impact over the long term. It's also important to note that while we often think of inflation as a bad thing, it's not inherently so. A modest level of inflation can actually stimulate economic growth. But when inflation rates are high or unpredictable, they can create significant problems for an economy and for individuals. In essence, as inflation rises, the value of your dollar falls and you can buy less with the same amount of money. Inflation isn't the only villain in the story. There are other factors at play that can affect your purchasing power. Now let's dive into some of these other factors. A significant one is economic policy. Governments and central banks implement policies that can either increase or decrease the money supply. For example, when a central bank lowers interest rates, it encourages borrowing and spending. This can lead to an increase in the money supply, which could potentially increase inflation and decrease purchasing power. On the other hand, if a central bank raises interest rates, this can slow down spending and keep inflation in check, thereby helping to maintain purchasing power. Next up is supply and demand. In essence, the price of goods and services is determined by their supply and demand. If a product is in high demand, but its supply is low, its price will likely rise. This means you'll need more money to purchase it, reducing your purchasing power. Conversely, if there's a surplus of a product, but demand is low, its price will likely drop, increasing your purchasing power. Lastly, we cannot overlook global events. Things like natural disasters, pandemics, wars, and significant changes in international trade can all influence purchasing power. For instance, a pandemic can disrupt supply chains, leading to a scarcity of certain goods. This can drive up their prices and diminish purchasing power. Similarly, a trade war can increase tariffs on imports, making imported goods more expensive and again, reducing purchasing power. In a nutshell, purchasing power isn't just about the amount of money in your pocket, it's also about the price of goods and services, which can be influenced by a host of factors, including economic policy, supply and demand, and global events. So it's not just about how much money you have, but also about what's happening in the economy and the world around you. Ever wondered why a Big Mac costs differently in different countries? It's all about purchasing power parity or PPP. Purchasing power parity or PPP is a fascinating economic concept that allows us to compare the purchasing power of different currencies. It's like a translator, helping us understand how much bang for our buck we get from one country to another. So, how does it work? PPP is based on the idea that in the absence of transaction costs and trade barriers, the same goods should cost the same in different countries when the price is expressed in the same currency. 
So, if a pair of jeans cost $50 in the United States, it should cost the equivalent of $50 in France, Japan, or any other country. But in reality, we know that's not always the case. Prices of goods can vary widely from one country to another due to factors like taxes, tariffs, and the cost of living. This is where PPP comes to the rescue. It adjusts the price of an item to reflect these differences, giving us a more accurate comparison of the purchasing power between different currencies. A common way to illustrate this concept is to use what's known as the Big Mac Index. The Big Mac Index, invented by The Economist, uses the price of a Big Mac as a benchmark to compare the purchasing power of different currencies. If a Big Mac costs $4 in the US, but only $2 in India, we could say that the purchasing power of the Indian rupee is stronger, or that the US dollar is overvalued compared to the rupee. In a nutshell, PPP helps us make sense of these price differences and gives us a glimpse into the economic health of different countries. By comparing the cost of a common basket of goods, we can get a sense of how far our money will go in different places. So PPP gives us a more realistic comparison of the cost of living across different countries. Now that you understand purchasing power, the question is, how can you protect it? Well, it's not as intimidating as it might sound. In fact, there are a number of strategies you can adopt to safeguard your purchasing power against inflation and other economic shifts. Let's delve into some of them. First off, consider investing in assets that appreciate over time. This could mean buying real estate, stocks, or even precious metals. The idea here is to put your money in something that tends to increase in value over time, providing a hedge against inflation. If the cost of goods and services is rising, so too should the value of your investments. This way, you're not just sitting on your money, you're actively making it work for you. Next up, diversification. This is an age-old investment strategy and for good reason. Spreading your investments across a variety of assets helps to mitigate risk. Think about it like this. If all your eggs are in one basket and that basket falls, you lose everything. But if your eggs are in multiple baskets, a fall in one won't be as devastating. Apply the same principle to your investments. Consider a mix of stocks, bonds, real estate, and even foreign currencies to protect your purchasing power. Lastly, keep abreast of economic trends. Stay informed about the state of the economy both globally and locally. This includes understanding changes in interest rates, inflation, and economic policies. Information is power, and in this case, it could mean the difference between your money losing value or maintaining its purchasing power. So, there you have it. Protecting your purchasing power boils down to investing wisely, diversifying your investments, and staying informed about economic trends. It might seem like a lot to take in, but remember, you don't have to do it alone. There are financial advisors and online resources available to help you navigate these waters. Remember, understanding and protecting your purchasing power is an essential part of financial literacy. And with these strategies at your disposal, you're well on your way to safeguarding your financial future. So what have we learned about purchasing power today? Well, we've delved into the heart of what purchasing power really is, the amount of goods or services that one's money can buy. We've discovered how inflation acts like a silent thief, stealthily eroding this power over time. We've also explored the multitude of factors that can affect purchasing power, from interest rates to economic stability, and how these variables can dramatically shape the value of your dollar. We've touched upon the intriguing concept of purchasing power parity, or PPP, a tool economists use to compare the purchasing power between different countries. And finally, we've discussed strategies to protect your purchasing power from investing wisely to understanding the impact of inflation on your savings. As we wrap up, remember that purchasing power isn't just a financial concept, it's a fact of life that impacts your wallet every day. Stay financially savvy! If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.